Good evening, or hello, wherever you might be listening to this. But uh, if this is the Outpost Frequencies, brought to you by thelastmovieoutpost.com. Uh, myself and Sean have been talking about extreme cinema and some of the most controversial movies ever made. We will be doing a full discussion on Asian exploitation movies soon, but the one that we have picked out to talk about this evening is Itchy the Killer. Now, Sean, this is one of your favourites, isn't it? I love it, yes. Great... Uh... Japanese, you know, I don't want to call it exploitation because that's it's sort of a, a different thing over there. But very, based on a manga, very violent, very very cool, very good movie. Basically, in a nutshell, what's the story about? Uh, the story is about this mentally ill dude that's been trained to be a killer, and he takes out some people, and then a gang. It's it's easy to get confused on exactly who the protagonist in this movie is, but <laughs> yeah. so a mob boss. Who, who am I rooting yeah. for here? That killer yeah, yeah. or that killer? <laughs> so a yakuza boss goes missing, and his crew set out to try to find him. And uh, the leader of the crew is really, I, I he's not Ichi. Ichi is the killer. Yeah. But the <clears throat> the uh, leader of the Yak is a gang that's trying to find their boss is sort of the, the real star of the show. And so we follow him and these guys as they try to basically investigate and torture and kill their way into finding out who, what happened to their boss. Meanwhile, we got this side plot of each of what exactly screwed him up. And he's really not all there at all. And, uh, and we get to see, uh, well, they eventually, you know, they eventually meet at the end into a pretty crazy uh, ending, really. Yeah, because they actually hug and make up, don't they? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> it was quite, yeah, it was quite Asian sweet. Asian cinema like it all. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not see that coming. That, that you know, them skipping off into the sunset, holding hands, really not. <laughs> no, um, obviously spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, this is your own stupid fault. But I mean, the end of the movie, um, somebody gets their neck slit, don't they? I think yeah, and and. Uh... I can never pronounce his. I, can, I have trouble with Japanese pronouncing Japanese names, but the um, leader of the Japanese mob, he, uh, you, you think there's going to be this big final brawl, but he ends up basically getting thrown off a building and has a hallucinate. I, it's a little confusing because <clears throat> let me tell you, if you're not, if you don't watch Japanese cinema, especially <laughs> this kind of movie, yeah, they they have a very I don't know. They they have a very non uh, the, like the ending doesn't really matter so much to them. They're more about the journey and a nonsense ending or no ending at all is fine with them. And so it's a little weird. I I don't know. No, I do know what you mean. Like you say, that's yeah. like you say it is definitely about the journey that they go through. Yeah. And not so That's... much the destination. When we think of James Bond, you know, you know, yes, there's obviously a journey that he goes through, but it's about James Bond killing the bad guy, and that's kind of how it ends. Whereas Itchy the Killer didn't. The, the ending, like you say, could be confusing if you don't, if you're not used to that kind of cinema. Yeah, because they really don't care that. I mean, I'm not not to say that they just like slapdash something yeah. on, but if their their innings can be a little weird and and probably culturally different because they like. Japanese movies will have a lot of symbolism that it just you have no idea that you're missing out on because you don't know. Yeah. And uh, there's some of that in the movie. There's some of that in the ending for sure. And um, it's not explained really well. The director of the movie is notorious for that. Kind of, uh, he's a genius, <laughs> but he's also kind of notorious for this kind of stuff too. So very much like, I mean, not the style, but very much like in the same way that Kubrick was. That Kubrick had sort of hidden messages and and deeper meaning yeah. in all the shots. And like I say, if you don't examine it, or you're not a Kubrickite, or whatever it might be, you you are going to miss quite a lot of it. Yeah. Not a, not that should not be a turn off for anybody that's not seen no. it yet. No, no, no. Uh, it's just just. Just when you see the ending, don't like go. Up. Well, those two assholes told me this was a good movie. <laughs> this is nonsense. Now there's, you know, watch the movie and then do a little, you know, maybe a little Wikipedia or Googling or something, and it'll kind of fill you in on exactly the yeah. cultural things that you, you, you know, that we all missed out on the first time we watched it because we're not Japanese. But that's in some respects that's quite good because it's yeah. it's then it's more interesting the sort of second time you watch it. Like I say, I only watched it for the first time last year, um, hmm. and I do want to see it again. It's kind of on the list to watch again because it's uh, having more understanding about the way the movie plays out and the way the end 
works out yeah. it makes it a much better t- chance but uh, i recommend watch. any movie made by that director takashi Miike. he is he's just a treasure trove of if if those movies were made in the u.s every yeah. one of them would be on this list probably <laughs> most of his films would be <laughs> on this list because they're he made one called visitor q that you know the movie opens with a prostitute letting her own dad rail her so things just get weirder from there it's yeah. right, i've just looked through his his, his stuff 13 assassins I, i'm sure is that the one where they start off with the kids training together i don't recall um it's probably one of these movies i'm just trying to look through i saw a japanese movie and it starts off with a bunch of kids who are all training to become assassins and are you th- you're thinking of a zoomy uh, yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. Azumi, that's what it was. Sorry, thank you, thank you for, for correcting me there. No, and c- to me, that was like the greatest opening of a movie ever. <laughs> you know, where yeah, they're all like, all oh, like, pick, fun. pick like, your okay, best friend, you, hey, yeah, you know. <laughs> pair up, pair up. Okay, now kill each other. Yeah, that was <laughs> you know? that was a belter. Um, There's I'm just, a sequel to that too, by the way, Azumi Two. In case you did not know, I think I did but I couldn't remember the name of um, Izumi but I like to say I'm going to have to look that up he has done quite a lot of movies as this director he did one a couple years ago called uh, Blade of the Immortal that is absolutely a blast and I give that the highest recommendation an absolute bloodbath of (laughs) Japanese samurai oh my god it's good it's it's not like the boring samurai like historical it's it's you know it's based on a, a main or manga and uh, it's great. Um, I've got to say that, like, I, I've seen a few of Akira Kurosawa's movies, and the whole samurai fighting is just kind of like one move and one guy's dead, and that's kind of it. And, and it is kind of a bit. Yeah. I think that's pretty true the way in real life. Though, yeah. You, you, the mo- you know, like, the whole point of that was not to actually cross swords because those things were very expensive and very sharp and it ruined <laughs> you them to, my sword <laughs> yeah so the idea was to get them with one draw stroke if possible or you know so okay i think i might have seen immortal blade i'm just looking at it um i possibly have but i'm blade definitely of the immortal blade of the immortal sorry um i'm definitely going to put the director on my watch list though because let's like say there's <laughs> there's one here called ninja kids i bet it's not for kids <laughs> he did another one called Goizu or Gozo, and that's weird. That takes weird to a oh boy. That takes weird to a new level. Interesting. So let's come back to Itchy. Um, the scene that particularly sticks with me is the uh, the other Yakuza boss who is strung up with hooks in his skin. In his back, yeah, yeah. And they pour tempura on. Uh, yeah. He's rough yeah <laughs> you know you, you you look at a main protagonist in a movie and you think to yourself ah, i could probably do that yeah i could jump out of a plane like tom cruise does that one the whole i mean do you know if that was real that they did that or was there special effects you know who knows with <laughs> takashi <Mika. laughs> really... no you signed a contract so you've got to do it <laughs> i don't know you know i don't i never looked into it too much i think uh what's his name what's the main uh, Hakabara. Hekab- I can't remember. Anyway, anymore. when he cuts his own tongue off as peanuts for going too far, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> there's, that's some pretty good. There's some pretty. Cr- and and Ichi himself has got basically like, imagine shoes that are, are like uh, ice skates that are weapons, and he he just cuts people yes. like straight in half. Yeah. And, it's weird because when I saw the film like so, I was going through a whole, <laughs> I was going through a phase of exploitation cinema, <laughs> um, and this one popped up. The way it was sold on the IMDb, it kind of didn't sell it the story correctly, and it kind of not put me off, but just left me a little confused. But looking at it now, it actually has corrected itself, and somebody's put up a better um, description of the film. Because like you say, it's about that they're looking for the whoever it was that you know did this to their boss, but then they find that this, this Itchy, who is you know sadistic beyond their wildest expectations. Well, but but the guy is kind of fascinated yeah. with him, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, because he wants somebody that's just as crazy. The, the, the Japanese mob boss leader is is he's always looking to you know the most he's very sadistic and he wants yeah. he's he thinks ichi is like his equal yeah. and he wants to meet this guy but ichi's really just like a, a crazy man child 
mentally de- you know that's been yeah. yeah so when he meets him he's kind of like you know they don't he doesn't really know what to do with him you know i think he's a little disappointed obviously by the fact he sticks a spike in his own ear <laughs> and, <laughs> over it yeah so i don't know it's i mean yeah. at one point Ichi rescues a prostitute that's being beaten yeah and and then offers to be the guy to beat her from now on <laughs> that's how crazy he is. um no I, i'm good he's, thanks <laughs> and he thinks he's being very chivalrous uh, the, you know. yeah it is a very bizarre movie but again it's one of those movies that if you are a cinephile and it's, you're, it's you're a hit- good movie yeah it is it's a re- it's just a straight up good movie though yeah it, it, it you don't even have to be like us to want to see it you can watch it and enjoy it for being like a just a you know a just, very cool bloody violent japanese uh uh japanese uh yakuza movie you know it's everything you could want from asian cinema <laughs> Not quite, but it's pretty close. Yeah, it's not yeah. battle royale, which we'll talk about in a few days or with, or whatever. But yes, battle royale is an absolute masterpiece, and it get battle royale delivers everything, absolutely everything I want in a movie, be it Japanese or wet, I don't care. Battle royale is no Hunger Games. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, that is true, actually. Yeah, it is no Hunger Games because <laughs> it makes the Hunger Games look like a massive, the bigger dog or turd than it actually is. <laughs> um, okay, so technical value of Itchy the Killer. Oh, it's maxed out on everything. Yeah. Technical value five. Uh, it's shocking, but uh, or controversial. Nah, I don't think it's that controversial. I've never really heard anybody talk about it in, in a oh man can you believe they you know what i mean i've never it's not it, I, I, like i say the guy who gets strung up by his skin and then gets the it's hot metal they pour over him isn't it no it's the the, the hot oil that you oh, dipped in pour it in that's right because, i mean again that, i don't know that's pretty bad it's but not, is it con- well that's shocking but is it controversial i mean shocking it's it, i would give it a four out of shocking for really i, I, I don't well, know yeah, I, well i don't know are we talking about normie expectations or my jaded we're never talking about your expectations because (laughs) that's that's just a realm even i don't want to go down (laughs) yeah i'm sure that i'm sure that yoda would find it a five out of shocking so i would give it that it is i still say it's pretty rough i mean i you know if you're going to say four i would say five so we'd give it a like maybe a four and a half i suppose yeah i would yeah because i don't it's 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 not that shocking i mean i don't I, yeah, I just I, don't see it as that shocking. It's it's bloody and violent, and it's got torture. But I, it's not like, oh my god, they you know they they strung a baby up by its own entrails or anything like that. That's that's your extreme. That's that's your measure of extreme, is it? No, that's so the way nothing I measures up to like, that. No, that's the way I would imagine like Yoda or one of the other fellows thinking. I don't know. So anyway, that was Itchy the Killer. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> I'm Why sorry. do these always end with laughing? I don't know. <laughs> We're sick puppies. Yeah, that's probably got something to do with it.